Hey, so today we're going to be talking about, you know what? We just went through a hurricane and everything. I want to tell you what worked really well for me. I want to tell you what I think I'm going to do different next time. I'm going to tell you some of the plans that you probably should do prior that I didn't think about myself until I had to implement them with my battery banks. Now, first off, the first thing I really want to talk about is, I think, a very important subject. A lot of people live along the coast. A lot of people live or like right on the coast, right on the beach and everything else. And I understand a lot of people do not want to leave their homes. I get it, okay? Especially in this day and age, uh, nobody wants to leave their homes and stuff. I think it would be a very great idea, once I really was sitting here thinking about this uh, last night when I was watching the news, um, how when people choose to stay in their homes and they don't choose to evacuate, you know, they can put a mandatory evacuation in, but they can't force you to physically leave your home. So this way here, if you're going to stay, I think everybody that stays should have a really good life vest that you could put on just on a chance. If you live inland a little bit and those surges of water come in, and start flooding your home if you can get out before you're trapped and you can't get out you're going to drown but if you can get out a door or window before that water rises all the way to the ceiling at least you can float yes it is a very dangerous type situation because you're floating along with everything else that is out there uh, cars and trees and debris and Lord only knows what's in that trash could be sewage and everything else but you're staying afloat until you can either be rescued or find some place that you can pull yourself up out of the water until maybe you can be rescued to ride the storm out just saying I think it is a very good idea uh, that uh, a lot of people should start pushing that if you're going to be staying you need to make sure that you have a life vest so if you have to get out of your home before the flood waters go all the way to the ceiling and you drown you have a better chance of survival being able to float and try to get yourself to someplace else uh, my generator the generator worked very well i have my generator about 30 to 40 feet from the window that I use to bring the power into the house. Now, the generator was running my side-by-side -side refrigerator, uh, my freezer, and some lights in the living room. Okay, so that worked out very well. Uh, that was all planned out. I knew exactly where I wanted to put my generator. I had a long enough cord, you know, a, a good sturdy weather cord, uh, not something cheap. You know, because it's raining and storming outside, you know, so I ran that in. That all worked out perfect. Uh, I kind of like managed my time with that. I let it run for so long. And when I'd hear the uh, refrigerator and the, the freezer kick off, I would go out and turn off the generator. I wanted to conserve my gas because not knowing how long our power could be out, and it was ended up being out for 12 hours, not knowing how long the power is going to be out. You know, yes, it's a pain in the ass, point blank, because you basically I just stayed up until, you know, three o'clock in the morning. You know, it was like you could get like an hour of sleep in between here or there. But, you know, I mean, I just because I wanted to conserve my gas, I only have so much gas. And even today, I went out to refill one of my cans. Um, just because I like to have it. And if I don't use it by the end of the hurricane season, I put the uh, uh, stabilizer in it. And then whatever I don't use by the end of the season, I take and I dump into my cars and I burn it off that way. But nobody had gas. Gas stations were open. Nobody had gas. So the generator part worked really well. Something I think everybody really needs to really think about. And I did not think about this myself. Yes, I got battery banks. I got them in all different sizes and everything else. I can run just about anything. But the thing of it is, is you got to think about beforehand what you want to use those particular battery banks for. You're going to need more power to run more things. You can use them for less power. For, you know, if you just want to run just a TV, so you could cast something to the TV or something for your kids to watch or something like that. Or if you wanted to hook up like a DVD player or something, you know, uh, one of these battery banks would run that for quite a while. 
But the thing of it is, is you want to plan out each room what you want to use in those with those battery banks. What is it you want to run? You want to run a light, a fan, uh, a TV? Do you need to run whatever? You know, do you have another refrigerator or freezer in another room in the garage or something like that? You could use a battery bank out there and run those. And what you would also do there is when you hear the refrigerator kick off, turn off the battery bank. Wait about an hour or so, depending on how much you have in these refrigerators, hour, hour and a half, and then kick it back on. Let it run until it, you know, kicks off again. Just keep repeating the, the process, and this way here, you save power. You know, that's the whole key, the name of the game is you're trying to save the power because you don't know how long it's going to be. With battery banks, you know, the next morning, you can always recharge your battery banks out with the sun. Like today, it's a gorgeous day outside, plenty of sun. You probably recharge these uh, battery banks in no time. But knowing where you want to place these and knowing what you want to do is a very, very big uh, thing that I think people really need to really think about. If you have your battery banks and all this kind of stuff, plan it out beforehand. Place them where they got to be. This way here, you're not thumbling around trying to figure out, okay, where, what do I want to run? Make sure you have that all in your plan so you know exactly what to do. So if they're forecasting a hurricane, a blizzard, ice storm, whatever it could be, make sure those are all pre-positioned into those rooms and stuff. And this way here, part of your battle tactic that, that you're going to be able to survive this thing is already in place. You've placed your equipment into those rooms. Next thing is, these things right here, I've done videos on these and everything else. These Vaunt, I'm telling you, these things are awesome. I have quite a few of these. Uh, we put these throughout the house and all different rooms and everything else. And, you know, if you just pick it up, so like if you set it on your bathroom counter in your bathroom, you just walk in, you just pick it up. And all you got to do is give a little, and you got light. Boom. Now, that's not all the light. You can pull it all the way out if you really want to see. These are all LED lights. They run on three AA batteries. I've talked about these things before. You can get them on Amazon. These things are just awesome. I highly suggest that people have these in your emergency supply kits. Next was the kitchen. The kitchen was a success. Um, I'm going to leave my kitchen set up because, you know, I do do my cooking videos on, that come out on Fridays. But the kitchen was a success. It is still set up. And uh, a lot of the neighbors were just like, whoa, you know, we get hungry. We're coming over here. And I was like, hey, well, come on over, you know. Especially when I started cooking those steaks with the onions and potatoes and, the, um, you know, mushrooms. Uh, everybody next door was just like, man, what are you cooking over there? Because, you know, <laughs> wasn't any power. And everybody was just kind of like hanging out in their garages and stuff because it was cooler. You know, so everybody could smell what I was doing and what I was cooking. But I do have a good group of people that live around me. Uh, I'm very thankful for that. And uh, it, it's a very uh, um, it's a very blessed thing to have is to have really good neighbors and everything else and uh, people you can trust. And, um, you know, that's a very important thing in this day and age that we do live in. So with that being said, uh, overall, everything went well. Uh, not a lot of sleep was involved because of the managing of the power systems. Um, you know, because your battery banks and stuff, you can use those if you had to to run like a CPAP machine. You can use it to run TVs, radios, lights, fans, um, all different types of stuff, refrigerators. Depends on the size of the battery banks that you do have. You could be running TVs and VCRs and um, DVD players and whatever so your kids can have something to watch and stuff and keep them out of your hair. So I just wanted to bring this video to you while a lot of this stuff is fresh on my mind. Uh, the number one thing that I do, it's like I did say, you know, people need to have that life jacket that you can put on if you live right along the coast. I think everybody should have one of those. Um, I do truly understand why some people do not want to leave their homes. Uh, I've been in that situation before and I can totally understand why you don't want to leave. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank everybody for everything that you do for this channel. Thank you for all the well wishes as we're going through the stores, all the prayers for me and my family. We really do appreciate it. My wife did tell me to tell everybody that she did say thank you very much because she does go on and read all the comments and everything else. Um, and I also want people to understand that 
you know, being prepared is something that is very, very important. And this was just proof in the pudding, having some place to cook, some way to cook, um, you know, having plenty of power to power up whatever it is that you wanted to power up. You have the resources. You have to put the time, the money, and the effort into securing these things that you are comfortable having and that you want to have in your own preparedness kit. I have mine. I give you all the ideas and everything else. A lot of the stuff that I have that I use and everything else is right in my Amazon storefront. You do not have to buy anything out of there. But that's to give you some ideas. Once you click and you go in there from my channel, you can see what I have. Then you can go out and see and find something that you would like. I just want people to have ideas of some of the things that I do use and everything else. I am going to be doing a video though on uh, some of the lights and stuff that I use as a content creator because a lot of you had questions on that because I was using those because they are they're battery operated. You charge them up and then you can move them around wherever you want. You can set the brightness and the whole nine yards. So they are they come in handy big time folks. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank you all once again for what, being a part of this channel, this community, and everything else. I truly appreciate everybody that is out there. I appreciate every member of this channel. And until next time, I got to get the wink in here because I got busted in one of my videos just yesterday because I didn't put the wink in. So this is for you. And you know who you are. So until next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.